Building a flood wall is more popular than ever, or at least it seems that way. And I want to make sure that everyone follows the right process so that the wall is likely to be effective and also not make the risk worse for other people. I've just been to have a look at a wall that we helped the homeowner with the risk assessment of and then actually obtaining the necessary consents and going through the process. Uh, so you can see the wall completed here. When we first visited this property, there was a little box hedge where that wall now is. And when the main street would flood, water would flow into the property through the front wall because it's quite old, so it's very, very porous. And a flood wall was considered and the council were agreeable to it. So the wall pictured is a double skin wall with an F2 rated brick. It has a 50 mil concrete cavity with steel rods in the cavity that go through into the foundation bonding the whole thing together. There's also stainless ties between each skin of bricks and in the concrete and in the mortar there's an SBR additive to make the whole wall more waterproof. So you can see it here and it's a smaller way of the wall being constructed than using a concrete block but stronger than if it was just double skin. It doesn't displace a huge amount of water, as you can see, and the rest of the property will be fitted with PFR measures to reduce ingress, but the main ingress was at the front. Now, in terms of the process, your first port of call should always be a risk assessment. You're going to need to know the depths that the water might be, what's actually a viable option, and one of those might be considering a flood wall. But you're still not ready to actually design the flood wall from that initial survey, because you're going to also need a CCTV drainage survey in most instances to know exactly where all the drains run and that you can actually create a dry area. Now, from that, you're going to then need to do some options development considering where the wall might go and consider minim minimally displacing water so that you're not impacting other people. But as part of that, you're also going to then need to calculate when you've decided where the wall might go the impact on the floodplain because you're going to need to uh, minimise the amount of water you displace and if it has any impact on the floodplain you're going to need to potentially provide compensatory storage so that you're creating an area where you might lower an area of garden so that the defended area actually uh, doesn't impact on depths for other people. You're going to need all of that potentially to obtain the right consents. And then part of it is you're going to also need a structural wall design to make sure the wall is suitable and strong enough. This is going to look at things like resistance to overturning, resistance to sliding. I have seen flood walls, well, I say flood walls, garden walls pushed over by flood water, where people have built walls that just weren't up to the necessary standard. So you're going to need a structural design. And that's all before you actually put a spade in the ground. Too many times I've seen, we want a flood wall here and we're going to just build it and no consideration for actually where the drains flow underneath. So they've created a moat that fills up with water or just building a normal wall and it gets pushed over. So to do this properly, there are some stages involved um, and we're here to guide people along that process. So it's a case of risk assessment, drainage survey, options development, uh, compensatory storage calculations or at least looking at how much water you might displace, structural design, consents and that's before you build it. We will do more helpful videos but if you do need help building a flood wall then please do contact us at FPS Environmental and we will be able to guide you on that journey. Thanks.